Hello, everyone, and welcome to Carnivorous Chats. Once again, it's James, your host, alongside my very special guest today, Mr. Charles Maddox. Charles is an author. He's an activist. He's a chef. He's been on TV. He's producing his own TV shows now, which we're going to get into, especially one that's very near and dear to my heart, the Carnivore Reverse Series. And we're also going to talk about the initial first couple of seasons on Carnivore and um, excuse me, on the reverse series and how Charles was impacted to do that by his own development of diabetes in his family. So Mr. Charles Maddox, I really appreciate you taking the time out today, sir, and joining me on Carnivorous Chats. Uh, thanks so much for having me, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, the pleasure's all mine, sir. I want to share what we were just talking offline uh, a minute ago about and what you, um, when I found out that you are the nephew of the great Robert Nesta Marley, my mm -hmm. listeners need to understand how impactful that is for me because that man and for many, many others worldwide impacted how I was as a young man coming up in the island of Bermuda. I can remember listening to his his music coming out of my father's record player. Uh, my father attended the University of West Indies in Jamaica, so he brought back a lot of Bob's music with him and it really impacted me as a young man and the positive uplifting message that his music had. And from Listening to you on other podcasts, Charles, I know, and I can't help but being the nephew of the great Robert Nesta, but there was a particular moment where you talked about you were in a studio and you just felt the vibration, a calling almost uh, that uh, he he had had in Jamaica. Is that correct? Yeah, this was right after his passing. And um, we were in Jamaica um, at, at his studio, actually in his house, and um, which is now, you know, the museum. And... Uh, it was really raw. It was just, you know, people and family and things like that. And I was just wander wandering around as a young kid and and wandered into the studio. And literally it was just like a, you know, the little red light that's on in the studio might have been the exit light or something like that. And um just just felt that vibe, felt something that just said, you know, it, the presence was still there, you know, and, um, and, and that's kind of what, you know, inspired me to, to, to do what I've been doing. And, and knowing that, uh, I remember my uncle once said, if this life is just for me, that uh, I don't want it. And I knew from an early age, I wanted to do something, what that something was special was, was, I didn't really know I had to go a few different routes, whether it was music, television, you know, acting and and things like that. And then kind of I, I would say when I was diagnosed um, probably about 13, 13 years ago is what I, I kind of figured out a little bit more of what I what my focus was going to be. So that's how I got on this 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 health journey that I'm on now. And just one last music aside, because. I, I I will call you my brother from another mother because I know <laughs> I know that you are also into hip hop quite uh, yeah. deeply and I, that was another music that spoke greatly to me in my youth man and you you had mentioned that you got to meet uh, people like obviously very influential people like Puffy and LL Cool J who I looked up to I mean I can remember buying LL Cool J's radio record when it first came out man yeah, was, yeah. that's that's, <laughs> yeah. that's really amazing. Charles, let's talk about you just touched on it. And this is, I think, a good a good point to jump into the, sort of the the meat of the conversation, if you will. Um, how did your diagnosis 12 years ago come about? I know that you mentioned that it, you were out and you noticed yourself um, and it's something some people should look out for. And it's an awareness for folks that you were urinating more frequently, but and you decided to get tested. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, I was I was just at a friend's house and um I just noticed that I was using the bathroom a little bit too much over the weekend. And I thought, hmm, okay, you know, let me just uh, go to a little local, uh, you know, Saturday clinic. I thought, you know, go in there like anyone else and gets a, a round of antibiotics. I didn't know what for, you know, but I, I, obviously they always want to just throw some antibiotics at whatever it might be. Uh, maybe I had a kidney infection, liver, I, I don't know. And, um, he literally just came back and and said, do, do you have a family history of diabetes? And I was like, diabetes, you know, and I knew nothing about diabetes. And um, and that that's the sad part, you know, um, that a black male and at, at my age then didn't know anything about diabetes. And 
he literally just said, well, it looks like you're, you know, you have diabetes and I could put you on medication. And I thought medication, you know, and at that point I actually had a, a, a primary care physician that I was seeing regularly and getting blood work. And I just literally just, I, I thought I was going to die. I, I, I got in the car, I didn't even tell my friend, went back to the house, just started getting online, trying to figure out what this diabetes thing was. And um, that's really kind of how it, it opened up my eyes to wanting to 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 create something to spread this word. Um, but it was definitely shocking. And, and for a, a doctor to just want to put you on medication without even saying, hey, you know what, you know, maybe you can do this or do that or, or you know, try this um, or follow up with your regular doctor. And this was also based on a, a finger prick test. This wasn't even based on blood work, um, which, you know, I had eaten fried rice and some uh, uh, fruit juice before I even got there. And, you know, so my blood sugar probably was going to be a little bit high. Um, so really, that's that's how this started. You know, Charles, I, when I listened to you and when I watched your initial series, it, it really struck me how, you know, I, I as you, as your, the listeners know already, I went through a very serious health journey myself where the doctors couldn't figure it out. And I was being prescribed all kinds of medication, tested for all kinds of autoimmune disorders. But it wasn't until I changed what I was putting in my mouth that my health recovered. Yeah. What did you, what was your next stage after that? I know you went and deep dived on the internet and um, what did you uncover and what, what were your thoughts um, when you uncovered it and what, what were the next steps for you? <laughs> well, the internet was definitely probably not the best place to go back then. You know, I mean, it was just so much conflicting information, um, you know, getting, getting nutrition advice from type two diabetics is at times not the best. And even I, I've even followed some groups now and I see them post stuff in there and they're like, you know, is, uh, is, is cornflakes okay without the, this? And I'm like, man, you can't be serious. I mean, you guys, so it, it was very conflicting. So what I did was I said, the, the best thing I, I'm going to go to, to, to God's diet, meaning that I'm going to do uh, uh, lean meat. Uh, at that point it was fruits uh, and vegetables, um, and water. Um, because, you know, I, I, I was drinking at that point. I remember this is when I had cooked books out and, 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 and very successful as, as a per se celebrity chef. And I, I was drinking, uh, 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 uh ginger ale because I thought it was healthy because it had ginger in it. And, um, I, I literally just started that and I was going to the gym, hitting the gym hard. And also I said, number one, I'm going to stop the gym because I had noticed I was just bulking up. And I said, I'm, I, I go to the gym. I don't do any cardio. So I said, I'm going to stop the gym. I'm just going to focus on doing a whole lot of walking, eat very little uh, per se, you know, smaller meals and focus on uh, uh, eating right. And um, literally between within the next, obviously that was my form of low carb per se, um, and within, I would say 30 days, I probably lost like 15 pounds, um, just from changing the diet, going low carb, um, getting, staying away from all the juices and, and per se the sodas and, and just drinking water and, and doing a ton of cardio. So, you know, it really, it really speaks to us, you know, as a society, and what's been pushed and advocated out there, you know, listening to you tell your story about the ginger ale made me smile because my grandmother came up from the Turks and Caicos and <laughs> anytime we had an upset tummy, yeah, have a little ginger ale, darling. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, I've a And, um, but, you know, there is certain wisdom in, in old teachings and, but you know, we are all constantly learning and evolving and we have to be our own end of one. I talk about being experimenting on ourselves and, you know, I would not have found the carnivore way of eating. And we can get into that a little bit later as we discuss your, your fantastic work on the reverse series carnivore, unless I had tried. And so many people are afraid to try. So I really commend you for going out there and at least looking, yeah, there might be some misinformation out there and you have to be wary of that. But until you make that first step, you just yeah. won't know. 
So you you made the step, and I commend you for it. So what was sort of the next thing you 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 like me? You want to get out there and tell folks about this, man. You want to let them know you don't have to take the pills. You can, especially where type two is concerned, you can you can change your lot in life, can't you? Yeah, it's been a it's been an interesting journey. I think at that point, I wanted to kind of like chronicle my story. And I looked in, around and I didn't see anybody like me, you know, who looked like me that was an advocate for diabetes. Um, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to put together a little you know, series on myself and try to, you know, chronicle what I'm going through and how to try to fix this and and ended up starting a documentary. Um, I, I started reaching out to a bunch of you know, pharmaceutical companies and people like that to to try to work with, and ended up finding one that that you know that you know helped give me some money to finance this documentary, um, and that kind of took me on this journey of really starting to look into. I was fully unaware of of healthcare being a business per se. I didn't realize there was so much to 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 the food industry, to healthcare, to the, to to dealing with doctors. So it was it was literally unraveling before my eyes, and I thought, wow, I've got to I've got to fight this. I, I want to be like the the Martin Luther King of diabetes, and 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 um, so it's been a learning process for twelve years, really, um, until you know I. I I believe there's levels of health, right? Some people may say, oh, I'm going to eat healthy. And they, they think eating a salad is healthy, right? They, they may not work out that much. And and then there's some people who will, you know, do this way of uh, another way of health. Uh, and, and for them, that's healthy. So at that point, I thought I was probably on a better road to health until, you know, a few years ago when I bumped into, let's say, keto. And then, of course, you know, trans kind of transitioned and, and learned more about, you know, carnivore. So um, it, it's really been a journey of, of understanding and still, you know, I'm, I'm still learning and still understanding and, and working with these amazing experts who uh, I'm able to just sit back and watch, you know, and be like, wow, this is, I'm really getting the fundamentals of 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 what health is. I wish I knew this back then. And that's I think part of what my mission is with these series is to to really put a face number one to to the conditions. Put a face to the people who are living with it. And also get the information out there and show them different modalities that they could actually try and utilize for for their best health and and I don't think one size fits all. I don't think you have to, everybody has to do it the same exact way per se. But but we know what works, right? We know that sticking to a low carb and staying away from processed food and staying away from the the sodas and the drinks and this that and the other thing. We know that works. So it's really just giving the options and putting it out there. So I'm still learning, and uh, uh, I'm, uh, it's it's always a, a fight and a battle. Um, with health, uh, but I'm but I'm appreciative, you know. And I know everyone certain certainly appreciates your efforts, sir, in that regard because it's it's groundbreaking when you think about it. It really is to go against what has been pushed on us in terms of medication for years, and we're talking about very learned folks that you know we're sort of coming up against in this medical system. Um, but you also then find out, as you eloquently put it, when you become red pilled as they did, Neo did in the matrix and you start seeing things for what they really are and how there's agenda driven behind everything, especially in minority communities and the food systems that are, are, are at play, um, and, you know, keeping people sick and subdued, then it's, it's really eye opening. And I found that out because I fell victim to the pervasive plant-based propaganda that is out there and despite my best efforts to 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 go vegan my health went off a cliff i mean but again it, to each and his and her own as you very rightly said i'm not here to tell folks how to live their life but i'm here to learn and show them the way and what i i know from my own experimentation has been yeah. successful Talk to me about, Charles, about how the inspiration came for that first reverse series. I know you mentioned you were in a Walmart parking lot and the truck came across. <laughs> you know, I was doing this. I created this RV tour, right, with uh, a biopharmaceutical company because I thought, you know, there's nobody, 
you know, uh, uh, well, I was in a parking lot and I saw the big red bus, you know, the one that collects the blood. And I thought, wow, why isn't there one for, for diabetes? And I reached out to a company and, and they, you know, fell for my, 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 my plan. And, and uh, next thing you know, we are putting this beautiful RV tour together. But while I was doing that, we were going all across the country and I was doing TV and all the, the, the spots and I would have people come on the bus on the RV and they said, Charles, you know, I was just diagnosed with type two diabetes. I, I don't know what to do. Or, you know, I got the medication. I'm thinking, wow, you know, you, you just were diagnosed, you got medication and you have no clue what to do. And I thought, you know what, I'm not, while, while this might be a great exercise of, of trying to, you know, make a, 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 a statement, we're not reaching anybody. And I think this is exactly what, you know, pharmaceutical companies and ad agencies love. They love programs that don't really reach people, right? They, they will spend millions of dollars on something very simple that, you know, some local nonprofit put together and, and, and that was that. Because when I came up to them with the, with the idea for the RV, they went and hired one of the, oh, they already had them, you know, hired, but they brought on a big marketing company that wanted nothing to do with me before uh, 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 this company, you know, brought me on. And they, they, I'm sure they spent well over, you know, 1.2, $1.3 million. And we did maybe three or four, maybe five stops. And um, so I thought, you know what, I, I want to do something that's actually going to reach some people. And, and what was the best way back then? Uh, the best way to reach people, I thought, was right in the comfort of their own homes. If we were able to bring together, you know, endocrinologists, dietitian, nutritionists, diabetes educators, and 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 bring them all into one place and educate them over a few days, inspire them, to be honest with you, because a lot of us really need inspiration more than at times education, right? Um, that that we could probably make a serious change. So that's where the inspiration actually came from to to create the series. And then from there, it kind of grew into, you know, utilizing that same, you know, platform it can be utilized in, in, in so many other conditions, right? Um, because what we're doing is really bringing awareness as well to that particular condition. And, um, you know, I always hold hope that you know, um, there are some great people out there and in, in these companies that think like I do and just want to get the message out there. But we know that's not the case. I think right now, you know, like my uncle said, it takes revolution to make a solution. And, you know, we are the revolution and we, we have to truly look at it like that. And we have to really work together, you know, in, in health, in, in this particular field that, that we're both pushing, um, you know, it, we have to we have to really rely on each other and 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 work together to 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 get the the message out. There's it's a lot of you know people doing you know podcasts here or you know the, the Instagram lives there, but I believe if, if if we come together and that's what we're trying to do, and that's why what we look at reverse, I bring the best of the best together for these series, and and I I like to call it the dream team of wellness, um, and that's what we're doing. And when I, Charles, when I first saw who you had for your series, I'm thinking to myself, man, <laughs> these are the who, who's who <laughs> in this world. I mean, it was the Avengers. Yeah, <laughs> it really was. I was thinking to myself, he's assembled them down there in, in yeah. Orlando when you first did it record and then obviously on to Jamaica. But talk to yeah. us about who you got for that first series. I mean, you got, oh man, I'll let you tell the folks. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I mean, uh, I remember James Woods uh, 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 told me one time, he said it was better. It's better to be young and aggressive than old and pushy. And even though I'm getting older, um, it, it sometimes it's just about reaching out and saying, hey. And, you know, the great thing about a lot of the experts that we have is, you know, they're all in in their own way successful, right? They're all making money. They're all you know doctors and 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 specialists and things like that. At, at times, it becomes legacy, right? What are you going to leave? And I think that um, a, allowing you know these experts to to contribute and leave something is is just so so wonderful. 
and you call them and 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 they're just excited to be a part of it now you know because we've done a few you know it's easier to bring other people on because they say okay well you've had you know this one on that one on and i see what you guys are doing the production looks fantastic but yeah we we we've had you know maria emmerich you know lovely lady um so talented and just a great heart Ken, dr ken berry who i i just I love that guy. I mean, he is not only just uh, extremely talented, but but funny and silly and just just great to be on set. I love being on set with him. Um, uh, you know, we've had Dr. Ovedia as one of the, the experts now in this new series, Dr. Tony Hampton. Uh, Kelly Hogan, uh, 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 Steak and Butter Gal, Bella, um, man, I could, I, I, I don't even, we've had so many <laughs> Dr. Vegas from, from Costa Rica. Uh, we've had so many, I, I, I forget who, who we've actually had because, uh, we've just had the best of the best and, and, um, and it, and, and it keeps getting better and we're working on, you know, new series and we're going to, you know, continue to add to those people. And Dr. Jason Fung, I've worked with him a few times. I love him. Always eager when I, when I ring him to, 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 to lend a helping hand. So it, in many ways, it really is a blessing because, you know, um, the fact that, uh, th that they do take my calls and that they do show up and, and, and a lot, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Dr. Kiltz, um, and, you know, it, Anthony came all the way from Australia, you know, uh, Maria came all the way from Hawaii, um, you know, Kilts is, it, you know, everybody took their time and really just, and, and all they want to do is share. That's all. Nobody said, Hey, Charles, um, we need this or we need that, or we need a, a, a writer has to have in our, in our dressing room or anything like that. It's just, they are really just down for the cause, you know? I appreciate that, Charles, because, you know, even me just reaching out to you, sir, and just asking, you know, you know, would you mind coming on to chat with me? Um, no hesitation, no hesitation. Now, you know, I'm over here a fan, man. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to, you know, the Charles Maddox right oh, now, man. man. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm telling you, I'm going to, I'm going to give your, your ego a little boozy, man. I'm, I'm really <laughs> a huge fan of everything you're doing. Such a nice guy to boot and, like you said, all the all the doctors in this space, all the people in this space are so supportive because they yeah. see the power and the results. Yeah. And, you know, I have Dr. Chafee coming on to chat with me next week. And I'm yeah. really excited about that because he, Charles, was so instrumental in my journey. I remember when I was sick, basically mm. laying in bed, I couldn't move, man. I was down to 127 pounds. So all I could do was listen to podcasts. Wow. So when I decided that I was going to live because at some points I didn't know if I was going to. Um, I said, if I ever get myself well and listening to Dr. Chafee and Dr. Baker and Dr. Kiltz and all these folks, I said, I'm going to start my own podcast to support those because if it wasn't for this information getting out there and your stuff like the reverse series that I watched when I was really sick, wow. it gives so many people, you touch so many lives unbeknownst. And let's talk a little bit about that now your guests for that first series and then coming back for the second series and the changes that you've been witness to for folks. And I'm sure you've had a bunch of people reach out to you since you did that first series and say, you've literally changed my life. Can you talk about some of the successes you've seen? Yeah. You know, what, what, what's interesting is, uh, you know, the first, did, the first actual series was done in Jamaica and then keto was the second version, second season, and then carnivore is now the third. The first and, and and I tell you, uh, brother, I I I didn't have a clue, you know. I I didn't know about keto. I didn't know about carnivore. I brought in some experts. D did we know low carb? Yeah, but 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 you know they weren't into any specific plan. Did we see changes? We did, right? Because why? We're, once you're able to once again get off of those those you know the the, you know, the carbs and the starch and the sugars and 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 all the drinks and so on and so forth and and get people exercising, we saw a tremendous change. People were you know guests lost 50, 60, 70 pounds. Some came off of insulin. Same. Some came off of their medication. So I wanted to step it up with keto and bumped into the keto. Uh, way of life and um, brought back two of the guests, 
that were on there who actually kind of slipped, right? So they did very well, but then they kind of went back to some bad ways and then brought some other guests back on. Um, Lisa was able to do fantastic. She went carnivore. She really, I think this kind of imprinted in on her, on her, her soul this time around. Um, her first season, her husband, who actually came there, um, Roger, very nice guy, but came there smoking cigarettes, came there, you know, with, you know half amputated leg. Um, he actually passed because he didn't, he didn't make those changes um that he needed to make and and had he had made those changes i believe he would still be around today um so yeah when it comes to those those guests all of them have totally made drastic changes lost the weight came off of medication lowered uh uh, uh whatever medication that they might have been on um inflammation you know reduced inflammation just living and thriving right now and 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 even if they don't do it you know the way you want them to do it per se they have the tools and that they have it in the, in in the back pocket and i know they can adapt to it um at any time and that's really what it's you know what what brings you joy knowing that they have made the change and if and if they slip they can jump back on because they know uh, how to do it you know so it's it's um it is and and you know we get a lot of messages and and um and and sometimes you get messages where people you know they want to know hey i just got diabetes you know charles what should i do and it's like man i wish that well, why wait until you got it you know i mean i've been putting this message out there for how long i mean you could have reached out to me before this you didn't have to wait until you were diagnosed with diabetes now you know, and then even then, you know, you don't really think they're going to make those changes. You know, once again, type two diabetes, and we're just talking that right now, is not one of those things where you feel it immediately, right? You know, you don't go and eat a cake and all of a sudden, you know, you feel a certain way. Um, it, it's it's progressive and it catches up to you. And um, so a lot of people, I don't think, take it that seriously because they don't feel that that instantaneous regret over overeating something. Um, and it's in, it's a killer, you know, I think now what, what we're looking to do with the series is more overall health, not per se a focus on diabetes, but overall health. We know that this lifestyle can, can do wonders and, you know, it's backed by a ton of science and, th and, and things like that and, re and research. Um, we look at, you know, Dr. Ovedia who has the book, stay off my table, my, my operating table. And, you know, what he, shares about uh, 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 cholesterol is just mind-blowing. What, what, what Dr. Shafee shares about vegetables is just mind-blowing. It's everything that, what, that we've been taught, you know, at an early age that we, we're just like, wow, you know, where did that come from? Who, who told us that eating salads was healthy? You know, I mean, you know, where, where did this come from? You know? It's, it's so true, Charles. The, the series, as you rightly said it brings everything together for folks that are searching for information you know because like you and i when you know when you first find out that you had diabetes and you were you said the internet wasn't a very good place to go right away because there's a lot of conflicting stuff out there but what you did is you got all the experts in this area you got dr kiltz who's a fertility expert dr avedia who's a heart, expert in the heart you got dr chafee who is a brain surgeon that is an expert in the carnivore diet and bring all these folks and then, you know, folks that have healed themselves to give their testimonies. Because I often talk to my listeners about the best testimony is a changed life. Yeah. And you have people that are, are changing their lives because of this series that you've put together. One thing we talked again about offline just before I started, Charles, was, and my listeners know I'm coming to you today from Bermuda. It was where I was born and raised. Yeah. A really sad but poignant fact given today's conversation came out in our in, in our newspaper last week. And it was an announcement that now a quarter of Bermuda's population has some form of diabetes. And then there are chronic kidney disease in 14% and 30% of those are over 65. Charles, how can we, and for those in, folks that don't know, Bermuda is very highly populated with Afro-Caribbean folks, my brothers and sisters of color. And, you know, we're about a 65% 
um, to the rest, you know, sort of a mix of uh, British that because we're a British territory, but how can we change that mindset for folks and try then sh- try and show them? Because as you and I know, coming up in the Caribbean and coming up in the island life, there there is a culture around this. There's a culture around eating a certain way and certain foods. How did you tackle that when you found out and you know going to you know your family's house and them saying, yeah, you just just have some of this, man. You know, it's difficult, isn't it? How how are you combating that? You know, we we did a lot of work in in Jamaica, done some great work in Trinidad, and just got back from the Cayman Islands too as well, and working on a series with the actual the actual Cayman Islands on heart disease, which is very prevalent uh, in, in 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 Cayman Island and the Caribbean. Um, you know, one thing I, I learned in in Jamaica, and we I remember we had auditions for the series, and I tell you, people came out from hours away on the bus who had diabetes, who just wanted to be a part of this, to try to reverse their diabetes, try to get some information. It was a beautiful event. Um, And and I always go back to this series, you know, and and I don't know if that's just, just my mind thinking that this is the best thing ever, but people, number one, they, they need to see people like themselves. They also need to understand how serious this is, that that people will die, that people will be amputated, that people will lose their vision, um, that people may need to be on dialysis. Um, The list goes on. And once they see that and once they understand that if 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 you do a few simple things that could actually make some serious change that if you reach out to these specific people, um, like a nutritionist, maybe a dietitian, some, some, you know, even though I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not with all of those because, you know, they're going to be pushing salads on, on people too as well. (laughs) You know, it's rare to get a nutritionist or a dietitian that's going to say go carnivore, um, you know, but at least this is a way to, to help, uh, bring this to the masses um, because that's really what needs to happen or else it's just going to continue just to be this way. And there's no incentive from anyone, uh, be it healthcare industry, pharmaceutical, nutraceutical, whatever it may be to, to tackle this on a, on a major scale. Cause it's all about making money. Um, but I think that if we, once again, keep doing what we're doing with this series, with some of these amazing experts that are getting the information out there. And, you know, you look at Ken, he's got millions of views on his, on his, on his YouTube. So obviously people are looking for alternatives, right? They're not trusting their doctors as much as, as they used to. Um, And I think coupled with just, you know, us really just working together, um, it, it can make a change. And and some of these people putting their money where their mouth is, you know, um, and, and saying, you know, let's, let's, let's make a change. It's, you know, like I said, there's enough people who are making plenty of money, you know, um, uh, and we, God knows we can't take it with us. And, uh, you know, we, we've got to support, you know, even like with your podcast, you know, there's, there's, there's not enough support for us, you know, and, and, you know, you may want sponsors or or people to say, hey, you know what, um, you know, here's something to keep you going. And once we lose advocates, once we lose people who just can't continue to to fight, right? Because when I got into diabetes, I saw plenty of people who were advocates or, or faces of it. And I've seen them all go because you know, as much passion as you have, if, 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 if someone isn't helping you, you know, create this campaign or helping you, you know, continue survive on your, on your podcast, then how can, how can you maintain, you know, um, it might be a great side project, but, you know, I'm sure you have aspirations and would love to invest in this and bring on some new equipment and get, get the message out there a little bit, you know, stronger with some social media marketing, whatever it may be. So, you know, we really got to support each other and, um, and, and keep pushing because without the advocates, you know, getting the message out there, 
it, it won't be out there. It's it's really, really true. Um, my listeners know I do this on my spare time. I do have a full-time day job. I would love to flip this into something because this yeah. is my passion, Charles. Once I found out and once I found healing, as I said to you when I was lying there, I committed to getting this message out because it is so important, similar to your journey and finding out you're diabetic and finding out that you could augment the consequences through simple dietary changes. And then speaking to these experts in the area, your eyes just get so opened. One thing that I wanted to talk to you about, and you know, as our eyes and minds expand and we learn, is that you often talk about a lot of the pushback that you got. And I was thinking about that when I heard you talking, you know, when you first presented this to networks and other places to sort of run the reverse series and you got some pushback, which you expected, but then there were some unexpected ones too. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I would say when I first started, I literally um, took my own money, shot a pilot. And um, then I, I, I brought the pilot to someone, great guy, Chad, who said, hey, you know what, man, I like the pilot and I could bring it to some networks and and um, yeah, see what happens. Yeah, it may take a couple months, so on and so forth. Literally within a week, he said, hey, Discovery, I said, got it to Discovery. They loved it. They loved to, to do something with it. At that point, now I'm like, okay, good Lord. I mean, this is just a pilot. I don't have no money to shoot this thing. So I literally went and locked myself in, uh, you know, uh, an office for, I would say, four weeks nonstop, all 10 hours of the day, calling everybody that you could imagine in the diabetes and the healthcare space, people who you thought would say, great idea. How can we, how can we be involved? You know, I mean, from, from, uh, 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 you know, blood collecting companies to, to diabetes companies, to you name it, people that I've met at, at, at conferences and Johnson and John, everybody. And none of them bit on this. <laughs> and then one lady connected me to Mankind, which makes the inhaled insulin, and uh, to the CEO. And I think he had just gotten there and, and they needed to do something to change up the, the face of the scope of it because it just wasn't working. And and uh, he believed and, and I harassed him for a couple of weeks until he finally cut a check. And that's how we really got going. But it was very surprising because we're talking, I'm talking to people who are, who are bringing in billions and, you know, the idea, and especially the name back then I was attacked by even people in the diabetes community because um, it was called reverse. And back then they weren't talking about reversing diabetes. It was taboo. And I remember one guy, one 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 kid, um, wrote a story on me, and I and I'm and I'm I'm laying it out perfectly, making sure he realized. And I said it over and over. This isn't about reversing per se diabetes. It's about reversing the mental, physical, spiritual state that we're in, and then changes will come. He puts out this story, and it's everything that 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 I didn't per se or that didn't push. Um, which of course, you know, isn't you you don't want anybody slamming you. And also on our first series, the, the CEO had the idea to bring this very big publication out there. Uh very huge publication, you know, they're like the CNN of 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 health. And yeah, I didn't I didn't even really know about them, you know, because I wasn't that deep, you know. And uh they came out there to two young ladies and came out literally with attitudes, came to the set. And uh, you could see that they were just asking questions. And I told I told them, I said, hey, everybody said, hey, be careful with those two. There's something, I don't know, something about them. You know, they didn't, and remember, they didn't see anything. All, all they do is just seen us shooting and so on and so forth. Um, and man, they slammed me like I, it was, it was heartbreaking. I'm like, man, he's, it was like they had a personal vendetta against me. And I think it has something to do with the company. I think it was almost like a hit. They didn't want to see that company succeed, like a hit on the company. But they slammed me like literally they had a personal vendetta just from watching us do scenes. It was like personal attacks. You know, and I've had other series where we focused on different conditions and eight days. 
And it was set to air on, um, I think, A&E or one of those networks. And literally, because we use alternative treatment, which, you know, what we're doing right now is alternative treatment in a sense, right? Alternative methods of, 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 of health. The, 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 they must, we ran a, a press release and literally two weeks before it was about to air, it must have got back to them. Maybe they didn't realize that it was a, a, a company based out of Mexico that does amazing work. Uh, you know, beautiful facilities. And they said, hey, listen, no, we we uh, we can't hear this. And I said, I'm like, we can't hear this. They made us jump through hoops and and go all, do all kind of stuff to give, you know, paperwork on, on the facility. And they just basically just said no. And uh, we had to go and find a new home for the series. And we all know what that's based on, right? I mean, you know, it, it, it they, they are backed by Disney and they, you know, they get, you know, tens of millions of dollars, I'm sure, in pharmaceutical pharmaceutical advertising, and and having that show here is not beneficial to uh, to the advertising dollars. So, um, but even now, you know, it's still the same. It's it's you, you know, whatever condition it is, I I, I have this idea that man, everybody's going to get behind this thing. You know, it's a sickle cell, or for you know. Uh, 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 you know, dementia, and you think, man, this is uh, it's going to be a winner. I could, you know, and you see that very fast that it's not like that. So we just try to find, uh, like a buddy says, I like girls that like me, and um, we try to find people that that are in the space that um, have a passion for whatever they're doing, whatever company that may be. And we, we, we team up with those people who just want to reach people to as well. And of course, they want to make money, but it's also about making a change. And, and a lot of people are in this space, like me, like yourself, like the Berries, like the Cherry, the, the Chafees, like the, the Ovedias. They, they want to they wanna reach people. I mean, if you look at Dr. Ovedia, I mean, this man is a heart surgeon. I mean, you know, he doesn't need to make a book saying, say off my operating table. He doesn't need to be doing podcasts. You know, I mean, he, he's got a beautiful house on, on the water and he could be living the dream, traveling the world, laying on beaches and, and, and sipping pina coladas. But he's actually, you know, doing podcasts, trying to touch people. So it's, it's for now, it's about for him, it's about legacy and saving lives. So those are the people we try to focus on now. I completely agree with your your stance on that. And, you know, just going back to having Dr. Chafee on this, this man is a top world-class <laughs> brain surgeon that flew back and said to me, James, I would love to. And I said, I will work with your schedule, Dr. Chafee, whenever, cause he's in Australia and we yeah. hooked up a time. He does yeah. not have to be doing no. this. This man, he, he is putting, I said, sir, you're putting people's brains back together. You take your time. <laughs> I'll, I will yeah. wait for you. And you know, I, I, as I said before, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me today, but I wanted to go back just a second to what you were talking about, Charles. And then since, you know, you're talking about the pharma influence on advertising dollars and everything. And ever since, again, I, I often talk to folks, I really, you really don't notice things until you immerse yourself in the knowledge and gain the knowledge. And I sit there and I'm not bashing this particular network, but I was watching, happened to be watching the food network the other evening. It just was on the television. I don't watch a lot of TV these days, but I did. And every it was ironic because the shows were all about high sugar, sweets, and baking competitions. And then immediately the ads ran for the next 10 minutes and they were all had to do with diabetes and pharmaceutical in interventions for various illnesses, every single one on the Food Network. Yeah. And so I'm thinking to myself, wow, yeah. look, look what's happening here. You're tempting folks with all these bad processed food, sweet treats, and then you're giving them the medication that will cure them. And, and I just shook my head. And then even on the news, when you, if you very rarely, like myself, watch the news, the news, the seven o'clock evening news, all has pharmaceutical ads from the big ones right throughout. And it's it's pervasive. So I, I give you a lot of credit because, you know, even with me starting this podcast and you've seen today when I just posted a couple of before and after pictures of myself on Twitter, I mean the hammering feedback from folks and just saying, you know, you're a liar. This is this, that, and the other. You have to have pretty thick skin to do what you're doing, Charles. So I commend you. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's it's definitely not easy. I think, you know, it's gotten better, obviously, because once again, I, I kind of stay in in uh, in my space. 
so you don't get hammered too much by um, uh, uh, certain people. I think, you know, more, you know, when I was beat up by some of those, 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 uh, those news outlets, it, it was, uh, I realized it wasn't per se about me, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't about me. It was about uh, uh, the message that they don't want to be out there, you know, and um uh, and 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 you know things are the tide is turning right. There are companies right now like I'm not going to name the company, but there are companies out there that 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 literally tout reversing diabetes, and there are companies that are based on keto, and companies that are based on carnivore. And so the tide is turning, and and um, it, it's a good thing, and and uh, I'm glad we're here to uh, to be a part of it. Sir, as we. Well, the next sort of 10 minutes and, and as we wind down, Charles, um, I just wanted to talk to you a bit about your your own journey and finding after the first couple of series, and especially the keto one, um, as most carnivores do, they find the carnivore space through the keto space. So it has its advantages. I did something similar. I uh, Coming from my plant-based vegan background with lots of juicing and high fruit sugars and everything like that, I took baby steps and I did keto and then I realized keto just got way too complicated. It just got way too complicated. So then I found Dr. Baker online with Joe Rogan. And I thought, hmm, this sounds pretty simple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so talk to us about that and your your own findings with this and, and the sort of inspiration for doing this carnivore series. Because I know the listeners today are really excited about this coming out. Yeah, no, you're right. I think obviously when you are into keto there's a bleed over into carnivore. So I think I must have caught something on carnivore when we were doing, doing keto. And I, I thought these people got to be crazy. You know what I'm saying? I, <laughs> I'm like, this is going too far now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, literally I thought, and I didn't pay it any attention. I said, these people can't be serious. I mean, you're telling me that eating bacon and eggs is healthy. Charles, and, and, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, man. I, I would <laughs> never do this to you, but I got to do it because I know, uh, you, I know you've been a guest on our dear friend Casey Ruff's Boundless Body Radio, right? Uh, did did, did <laughs> Casey ever tell you a story when he first watched Dr. Baker on Rogan? No, no, no. He That's how he went car carnivore. He's, of course, carnivore now. But when he first yeah. saw it, he said, this is outlandish, outrageous. <laughs> and he turned it off. And do you know he didn't watch it for years till just, I think, this past year to finish it? Because he uh, now knows the benefits and power <laughs> of the carnivore diet. So sorry to interrupt you. Keep your train of thought. Yeah, I thought these people, I said, this has gone too far now. These people are, are insane. Right, boy, and because what what do we hear that that the cholesterol is gonna just you know bacon is gonna raise your cholesterol and this that and the other thing and heart disease and everything like that, and then I just started to and and once again this is why the series is important because it was one of those things where you kind of bump into this and maybe bump into that and kind of look a little bit here and that's why the series is I love the series because it 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 takes the guesswork and brings all this a lot of information in one place where you can kind of say okay. I get it. Um, and, and, and I just started hearing people and I'm like, Ooh, that actually makes sense. And then you start getting into, you know, some podcasts and listening. You're like, Oh, okay. That actually, uh, I, I get that, you know, it, it makes sense. So that's, that's kind of how I got into the carnivore and got deep into that and just, you know, realize as same as you, that when I was doing keto, I always felt that I was one step away from just going back to regular food, right? Because, you know, you with keto, you, you're making keto bread, you know what I'm saying? You're going to use the egg whites and this, that, and the other thing. Then, you know, you're going to make a, a, a keto uh, a chocolate pie. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, it's like, well, you're going to use this, you know, and then you're going to use that. And I, I felt like I was very close to just going all the way back to regular eating um, because there was so many recipes and so many variations and ways to make this, that, and the other thing. And I'm the type of person, man, that, that you know, I, I, I have a food addiction. And if I'm on the verge of, you know, making a chocolate pie, you know, or a chocolate cake that, you know, is keto, I might just, you know, run out in the middle of the night, man, and, 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 uh, in, in, in my boxes and head to 7 Eleven to get me, a, 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 a some chips and a, and a hot dog with, and a, and a hamburger or something. So, um, I, I found that carnivore is a much easier way to do things. 
um, that it is very simple. Um, you know, I practice serious intermittent fasting, so I don't eat a ton uh, at all, you know, a day. I, I might actually, I, at times I, I'll do one meal a day. Sometimes if I do two, it's very light, all, you know, plant, you know, meat based and, um, um, I'm, I'm happy. And I, number one, I don't need to eat as much, but we don't need to eat as much as we, we feel we do. Um, I feel a thousand times better. Um, inflammation has gone down. Um, my, my numbers, I just was at the doctor the other day and, 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 uh, my numbers are fantastic. Of course, she, my cholesterol actually went down because it was, was way higher. So it actually went down to, uh, uh it, it's still, high, it was still uh, on the high side, but it went down and she was like, well, yeah, I'm a little worried about your cholesterol. I'm like, not me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, if you understood about cholesterol, you wouldn't be worried about cholesterol, you know? Um, and I said, you're just trying to put me on a statin, you know? And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she she understood my way of life. So she was like, oh, I, you know, she kind of was like, I, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to leave you alone. And she was like, are you on any medication? And I'm like, no, no, no. I said, I, I might take some metformin every now and then because it's it's it's, it's being studied as an anti-aging drug. Um, and she was like, yeah, I have uh, some other patients that say the same thing. And so she stood clear of me. You know, she 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 didn't want no parts of me. Um and uh, so, yeah, so it, it's been life changing. And, um, you know, I, I think there's more to learn and and I look forward to it. You know, you, you hit the nail on the head there, because when I first transitioned, Charles, like, as you said, I was like, oh, this is this is pretty nice. You know, for me, the big deal was adding animal foods back into my diet after being a vegan for so long. And that's what radically changed my health. And I tell folks and the keto transition is can be if you philosophically look at it made easier i.e less impactful but, but then you get to understand like you you find out that the keto space has been hybridized especially in the grocery stores now the marketing gurus got a hold of it and there's all these sweet treats filled with sugar all the nut flowers nut based milks and yeah. you know to her credit uh, my listeners should be aware this is the first time i'm announcing it but i be will i will be attending KetoCon in austin texas yeah. awesome and, and, you know, Robin, I believe Switzer is her last name, who's the founder of the organization, made a commitment because she saw all this, this sort of, I hate to use the term, but bastardized keto products in the space and has made it a clean event now, which I'm very proud of her for doing. She will not allow vendors to come in. They have to pass a rigorous, you know, mm -hmm. inspection as to, from her is to say, you know, is this clean? Is this yeah. what I want my people to be eating? So yeah. that's a really good thing. But yeah, yeah, man, I... That that story I had to tell you about Casey it was funny because he was like, "This is outrageous, outlandish." Yeah. Like, These people have gone overboard now, boy. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I want you to just talk to the folks, my good listeners, about what's next for Charles Maddox and this reversed carnivore series. And after that, please let them know where they can find you too, please, Charles. Definitely, you. We are. We. You know, I would love to work on another series of carnivore, and and um, you know what's interesting. I want to do a season a carnivore verse um vegan and and bring both there and I wouldn't say go head to head but in many ways go head to head mm -hmm. to kind of to kind of really flush out the 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 story and 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 create a little friction where you know it might be it might be very good for publicity very good for marketing but very good for the people who 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 need to hear and understand the information because a lot of doctors uh, in and like yourself were vegan before they went carnivore right so they they saw the change and they were they were very into into the veganism and then realized this wasn't it so i would love to i would love to create a series like that i'm working on a series for longevity putting that together. That's a, it's going to be a beautiful series. Got some of the top names in that. Um, you know, Brandy who works with me is going to be a keto con looking for some, with some other partners too, as well to, to get on board and, and, uh, and, and continue to, you know, uh, take the series to, to, uh, to another level because it's always more we could learn, always more we could share, always more people we can touch. Um, we'll always put a spin on it. Um, uh, working on a series for heart disease, um, 
and, uh, and and really that's it. Just just continuing to to knock these series out, and uh, so that's three series that we're looking at in a row, and and um, and working on something really exciting, a platform um, called Reverse uh, Healthcare right now. That would be like a, a, a company that's a few companies that are out there that's focused on using um, the tools that we have from intermittent fasting to, to, to lifestyle changes, dietary changes to reverse type two diabetes. There are companies that are raising, you know, hundred and the other day I read one company raise uh, uh, for, e, for its E-series round $133 million in venture capital funding. So we are working on, on putting that out there and getting funding for that so we can create a platform where we can get this information and 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 get it in people's hands and 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 utilize some of these amazing experts that we that we that I've been privileged to work with to create a platform to to change lives, not just reverse type two diabetes, but overall health. Man, this is so exciting, Charles. I'm so excited to to for you with all the prospects that you have going on. Uh, just yeah. lastly, where, where can folks go to find out more? Where are you on your social channels? Let them know. Yeah, you know, you know, uh, I would say Bella and Ellie, B E L L A A N D E L L E Media dot com. Uh, you know, we're reversed um, uh, series um on uh on on instagram you could just literally google me charles maddox m-a-t-t-o-c-k-s and and you'll find plenty and be connected to 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 what we what we're doing we have a new youtube channel that we're trying to build out called the future of health um and and why we why we're doing that is because i would love to create the first ever uh all health news channel Right. So just like you see CNN or Fox or whatever like that, make it all about health. And uh, so we we have some really cool things coming on with that. We have Dr. S uh, Sarah doing a new uh, news segment on there. We're going to be, you know, uh, uh, continuing to put our shows on there and bring on new content so people can find all this information in one great place. Amazing. And last question, please remind me, Charles, my, please forgive me as well. Reverse Carnivore, when is it dropping? Uh, give me two months, two and a half months. Right on. I'm so excited. <laughs> right on. Mr. Charles Maddox, this has been an absolute honor and a privilege, sir, to be chatting with you. Uh, it has been my pleasure today, honestly, sir. I wish you nothing but the best in your future endeavors. Uh, we appreciate you and everything that you're doing. So thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And I know my listeners do too. Thanks, James. It's a pleasure.